So, after officially changing its name, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, or NNPC Limited, has also changed from being a corporation to a limited liability company. That means it will now operate as a commercial company, which will make profit and be limited by shares. The change is in line with the provisions of the Petroleum Industry Act, which President Buhari signed into law, and it's supposed to address many issues such as governance, regulatory frameworks, community relations and management. So beyond being a bold attempt to try to turn around the petroleum sector in Nigeria, who are the shareholders of this new NNPC Limited? And how is the change to a private limited liability company going to work if the government is still in control of the ownership? And how is NNPC Limited going to change the habits of the people who work there and who manage Nigeria's oil industry? Well, to help us dig deeper into this new NNPC incarnation, I'm joined now in the studio by the group CEO of NNPC Limited, Mele Kiari. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you very much. Busy but interesting days for you, the last 24 hours, I imagine. Clearly very interesting times. And um, you've rebranded. Um, you've also, well, announced... Um, that you will be let ready for shareholders by the middle of next year. In other words, um, if there were to, to be an initial public offering, um, that would be you'd be ready to do that by the middle of 2023. Is that right? Not exactly. Uh, first of all, let me just take from from the beginning. Uh, mm. We're not rebranding. Rebranding means that there's something about your colors, a few things you don't like, you want to change it, you want the public to see you differently. That's not what we did. You know, it's simply a total turnaround because you're dealing with a company or a corporation that was established by the Act of the National Assembly to operate as a business and as an agency of government. Now, clearly, that's what it is. When you abandon that position to come to a clearly a commercial position backed by laws that are not necessarily an act that is establishing a company, but it's a law that is bringing up a complete turnaround of our fiscal and regulatory framework in our country, in the oil and gas sector, and beyond the subjecting these companies to the rules that other players in the private sector are doing, the Company and Allied Matters Act. And of course, that brings with it another layer of control, which is that you, know, you must adhere to other uh, governance issues that is common to all businesses. So it's a brand new situation. You are not rebranding. You are moving from a past that is clearly of a definite and a different expectation to a new expectation where this company must deliver value to its shareholders. And it means that it must deliver value to them and it also must deliver dividend to them at the end of a period that is determined by law. Mm. And beyond this, when you talk about IPO, you know, what we said is this, that the law allows us to scale down the ownership of this company to private uh, interest. The law clearly allows us to do this. But for you to do this, you must be IPO ready. IP already means that you have system, you have processes, you have assets, you have a way of doing things, you have a line of business that you are, those who want to buy interest in this company can see. And that ultimately they can say, look, if you say, look, I'm IP already, that you are telling them that I'm good for business, you make money, you're not going to lose money, you have good leadership in the company, you have good culture in the company, and also the investors, external to what you're doing, financial institutions will have a line of sight around your assets, your books, you are transparent enough, you have good governance, and ultimately you can say, look, come, I'm worth 500. Exa for example, you can say, I'm worth X, uh, X value, and come and take a part of it. And this is what it means, that by the mid of next year, we will be in that position. As a matter of fact, it's a process. We didn't start today. Uh, two to three years ago, we knew we were getting here. We knew that the Petroleum Industry Act is, was going to come in, in, in place. And what we know what it wants to do, and ultimately it needs a commercial company. It's going to establish a commercial company, and therefore it's a process. And this process will clearly mature by the middle of next year, and will clearly say that we're IPO ready. And then the shareholders of record today will decide whether or not they want to sell interest in it. Well, that sounds like we should be celebrating a new era, except that it hasn't happened, has it? I think there's an indication. Uh, if you recall, uh, in 2021, 2021, we declared a net profit of 287 billion naira. This is nothing. We are a multi-trillion naira company. We are a multi-multi-billion dollar company. And of course, you know, people celebrated this. Yes, it's different because in 43 years, you are not able to come up to say, look, we made money from this business. But we know for sure that the potentials of this company is beyond this. 
beyond 287 billion naira. And we know, we have seen the progress. We know that it is possible to scale this up. And therefore, ultimately, you know, the shareholders will feel and will see that this company will deliver value to them uh, ultimately. And of course, it's not going to take a time to do that. It's not going to wait for three years. Uh, we know that by mid of next year, it will be so crystallized that it is obvious this company has value. And we're not in the rank of companies who will be talking about 207 billion naira. We felt very little doing that, but we knew that it's coming from a past. We knew that it's a process. It can, it can, it can scale it up. And this is exactly what we are trying to do. And ultimately, shareholders will say that first, this company is uh, ensuring energy security for the country, which is what's most important to, to its shareholders. Remind you, the shareholders are the 200 million Nigerians. We only have institutions holding in trust for them. But the, the shareholders of this company are 200 million. Who would they expect nothing from this company rather than giving them energy security? As a first step, then you can talk about the value that it can create in mm -hmm. terms of dividend that you can put on the table so that other infrastructure activities can take place. Well, I want to come back and talk about the value of the company because uh, you, you've talked about it and some figures have been bandied around um, about um, sort of the, the net assets of, of uh, the NNPC. But let's dig deeper into this NNPC incarnation because you touched briefly on the issue of ownership. Who are the shareholders of the new NNPC? Who owns the new NNPC? The company is owned by the over 200 million Nigerians. They are the shareholders of this company. But shareholders are always represented. And in this context, it is now represented by the Ministry of Petroleum Incorporated and Ministry of Finance Incorporated on behalf of the rest of the Federation and on behalf of all of us. Yeah, but if, if the board of the NNPC is appointed by the federal government, doesn't that mean that the federal government is the owner? Because we keep hearing, as you said, that it's not owned by the federal government. We've heard, you know, the minister yesterday saying it's owned by the federation. What's the difference? Yeah, the difference between the federal government and the federation, the federation, federal government is just one arm of the government in this country. And it only represents the federal government. But of course, the federation includes the states, and the local governments and by implication the whole body of the 200 million nigerians but you know all of them cannot sit in the board of this company as there's a law the petroleum industry act has clearly indicated that the president is delicated the responsibility to appoint a board on behalf of the 200 million shareholders to appoint leadership of this company to also appoint a board of directors for this company so it's a delegated responsibility it's really not a federal government action it is defined by law this law is put in place by the national assembly which is clearly represented by all segments of the society it is representative of all of us and they decided that everybody can't do that that board should be established by mr president well let's be clear on that because there's growing disquiet in some quarters about this issue of ownership where do the other tiers of government fall into in terms of ownership are they only there to receive dividends or are they shareholders in other words can the states and the local governments have representation on the board because that would prevent the federal government from changing things uh, because other tiers of government would be constitutionally represented. Yes, I understand this, uh, but you must recognize that the National Assembly is representative of all of us. And the laws establishing this company was put in place by the National Assembly. And all these facts have been put into consideration, whether or not how we're going to get representation in the board of this company. And it was uh, clearly agreed by all of us that that role should be delegated to the president of the country who can appoint the board of directors of this company by implication and we must trust whoever is the president at that point in time to be act in the, in the best interest of all of us to appoint a board that is representative and the law is very clear also you can't just bring anybody on the board the board the, the law was very clear on the qualification of these board members and how they are going to be appointed and who will confirm it and, and therefore, uh, I see no, ch no issue around this because uh, you cannot say that uh, it is not representative enough because the law has said that it is enough. And I, I personally believe that it is sufficient for you to have 
a, a law that will establish how a board will be constituted, who will appoint it. It doesn't matter who is in government or who is in power, but it just said that there must be a definite board that will be representative of this company and of all of us. Okay. Well, let's move away from that and um, go to how the NNPC, because you've talked volubly about this, the way that it's the processes and the systems and, and so on are going to uh, are changing and evolving in a positive direction. How is the NNPC going to change the habits of the people who work there and who've managed or perhaps mismanaged Nigeria's oil industry for years? I mean, as we said at the outset, isn't it delusional to think that anything has actually changed apart from the name because the staff are the same and the system is broadly speaking the same. They are not. Uh, I'm sorry, it is not. Did you get rid they of all your staff? Not or? about getting rid of people. It's right. about the people. It's about the system and the process. Remember that the Petroleum Industry Act was very, very clear mm. on what this company will look like. You know, and then where it's coming from is also very clear because you have the Nigerian National Petroleum Company, which is an agency of government with all respect. Yes, r running a business on behalf of the state, but completely accountable to the uh, to the state on on day to day basis in in a sense. And not only that, even its spending, its processes are subject to appropriation in the National Assembly. But that's very different because once you do this, it simply means that you know you cannot take certain steps, you cannot take full responsibility. So what has changed today is that this is a company that is limited under the rules of the Company Allowed Matters Act. Uh, this is entirely different. Because cultures will naturally change. It's a switch. You can't help it because you are expected to deliver value. We're not delivering value. It's an issue under karma. Mm. For instance, if you don't make profit for three years, you know, you're due for liquidation. You know, that wouldn't happen to the NMPC. It didn't declare profit for 43 years. Nothing happened. Nothing changed. And as a matter of fact, even for you to award contracts to get your work done in the field, you still need the assurances and confirmation of certain agencies of government to do this. And then you always have an excuse that, look, you didn't allow me to do this, so I can't deliver this. Well, all this have vanished. And as a matter of fact, I'm not sure it's about the staff of the corporation. It's about the system and the process and the law supporting it. And I'm not saying there are no internal challenges. I'm not saying we are not uh, part of the challenge that uh, caused us to have that bad situation. But obviously, yes. But the other part of it is that there are controls that NMPC staff and myself, including the management, I have no control over it. You have to subject your processes to certain system. You have to go to the National Assembly to seek approval for you to even spend money. That's going to wait until they are ready for it. And sometimes, even when they are ready, you have to convince them that it is so, even if they are commercially so. And, and those, those perspectives will vanish because they are a company you are expected to deliver value. And therefore, it's an automatic speech. I know my colleagues in the company, they have high expectations about this. We are frustrated about some of the limitations that we have. Those limitations are, go are gone. It's not about the people. I believe that we have one of the best skilled uh, manpower that any company can have in this country. Uh, this has been tested severally. And I'm very sure that, you know, culture shift is not a challenge, you know. Once there is appropriate leadership, once people have a line of sight around where we're going, what we want to do, what we have to deliver co collectively as, as a team. And I'm not sure we have those difficulties. I can see the excitement today in the company. You need to just come into the company to see that we are ready to deliver. The staff know that those limitations are no longer existing. They know that they have to deliver value. They also know that you know, there's absolute confidence in, by the shareholders. You know, the 200 million Nigerians are doubtful. We know this. But we need to surprise them. We know that there's a new expectation. This expectation can be met. And that's what leads to culture change. And this culture change can actually come as a switch. And there's a paradigm shift because it is very obvious. We now know that we are not the NSPC that we have always known. We are not a corporation. We are a business. And business must deliver value. That wasn't necessary in the past because you can lose money and nothing happens. Government can only to bail. The law, in part, as a matter of fact, the law said that we have no recourse to public funds. That's what the law said. And that means that whatever goes wrong, you can't go back to Mr. President and say, Mr. President, oh, I don't have money, you have to do this for me. Whatever relationship we have with the state today is very clear that it will be a commercial relationship. Yes, we will do agency work for the state, but for a fee. There will be a service level agreement between us and the state for everything that we do for the state as a business. We will not do it for nothing. And therefore, the whole culture of the company would automatically switch because realities have down on, down on us, expectations are different, we have no room for excuses. And I'm very, very confident from the assurances that I have from my colleague in the company and from the board of directors that we have today that have seen the level of change that we have seen, the ability to switch, the ability to make decisions are very, very different. And I'm very, very convinced that you don't have those cultures in it's a, probably a, a past of frustration, but it's not there anymore. Well, you certainly sound very optimistic. Um, 
But let, let's talk about um, the money that's paid as subsidy here in Nigeria. Is it going to be collected by the NNPC or not? In other words, is the NNPC going to be like the other marketers who go to the federal government to collect subsidy? Subsidy is a, is a policy decision, my brother. I'm sure you understand this. You know, uh, For us in NNPC now, we are freed from that burden. In the sense that today, uh, as you understand, subsidy simply means uh, selling a product below its market price for a consideration that the state is ready to pay for. Mm. You know, it's very easy to, easy to see. Yeah, and but you're going to be in that same boat as yeah, the market. Yeah, you see, the, what, it's a business for us now. It's the government wants us to bring products, sell to the, its people at a price lower than the market price. We'll bring it at the market price. We'll charge them for, the, for a fee for doing that service for them. That's simply what it means. And countries have different approaches to this. And we have no issues with this. We're a business and, and we we'll continue to deliver that service. For instance, in many countries, as recent as uh, three weeks ago, because of these uh, heated issues around energy transition and the price of commodities in the market, and I'm sure you've seen countries bringing down tax rates on petroleum products uh, prices, or even taking it to zero, is another form of subsidy. Really, what, that's what it means. So if companies and countries decide a framework of doing this, and of course it is the responsibility of businesses to do this. In this space, you have private companies, you have companies that is owned by all of us, the NMPC Limited, for instance. You know, once that decision is made, it's government's decision to see who's going to handle this for them. Is it NMPC? Are we going to open it to the upper, to the generality of commercial uh, traders who can bring product into the country? And so it will be the decision of government. In either situation, NNCPC will be there to play a role, and that role is to provide that product at the price that the state wants. And we understand the situation. We understand the social situation today. Yes, uh, I can tell you that... Uh, there's no country that is not fiddling with some form of subsidy around uh, commodity or particularly energy, energy prices because of the high prices that is in the market today. It is causing a lot of social issues all over the world, including developed countries. And we see this uh, situation uh, unfolding in many countries. I'm sure this is very clear to the general members of the pu public. But what is very, very obvious is that NN what's the NNPC role in this? Now, who we'll go to the market, we we'll secure this product, whether it is internally produced or we we'll buy it from the open market, it will be at a price. And, of course, it is our duty to transfer this to the ultimate uh, users right. at the price that the state wants. And well, that, that, we, have, we have no issues with this. That's an important mm. point because my next question was going to be, yeah. what about pricing? How is that going to work? I if you are a marketer, uh, will you increase your own price, set your own price? If not, who determines the price? Yes. The, the P Petroleum Industry Act clearly indicated that petroleum will be priced at its market price. That's very, very true. But it also is a policy issue, you must understand, that if the state can define, decide to spend money on its citizen in a manner that it wants. And that's why the National Assembly, in its wisdom, you know, approved that there should be a subsidy on petroleum products for this fiscal year. There's a provision of mm -hmm. $4 trillion naira of subsidy in this fiscal year. What it means is that this is money that we want to spend on our people. So you have no right as a commercial company to ask why this is, this is, this is done. And, and we also believe, you know, deeply that, you know, yes, there are social situations. Energy prices are so high that it makes business sense. It makes social sense to do, to do this. But implementing this is a different ballgame altogether. So you go to the market, you buy prices of petroleum products are not hidden. They are public. Everybody can, can have a, an idea around the prices of petroleum products. And, of course, when you bring it to the country, uh, you essentially transfer it to the state. And, of course, what we haven't done at this point in time is to put a, a fee for that service. And this, will, of course, will come because we aren't... But we didn't do the cutover. The cutover has come. We can now ask them, look, I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to bring the market price for this. And, and of course, I'm going to deliver this product to your, mm. your citizen. Uh, as we do this, it's going to cost us money. We're going to use people to do this. We're going to use infrastructure to deliver them. And there's a cost around this. And we can have a conversation around this. Okay, well, let's talk about the value. Remember, we said we'd come back to mm. this. Um, the, we hear that the NMPC... Um, obviously, that's very interesting to potential investors. But we hear that the NMPC has $60 billion worth of net assets. What does that mean? Are those verified assets? They are. As a matter of fact, that otherwise, we will not be talking about NMPC Limited today. The assets of the company uh, in a manner that is determined by law, in a process that is best practice in the industry, we engage the best of uh, evaluating agencies that you can think of to arrive at the value of those assets. And ultimately, the, the Federation, in its wisdom and by the provision of the petroleum industry, has transferred asset currently worth $59.8 billion. This is the first tranche. That's about 80% of the assets that are available to us. There's still work going on to clear and to have numbers around the 20% of the, of the assets that we can see. 
what does that mean to us you know it means that these assets are on your balance sheet that you are accountable for it you can put it into the market you can also use it as a basis for uh, securing financing so that's a very very different situation today and not only that uh, this also excludes your upstream assets upstream soft surface assets you know because uh, it's very clear that you know we're a very endowed country we have huge resources we think that uh, when the evaluation is completed we'll probably have access to over another 80 to 90 billion dollar worth of uh, upstream assets and the meaning of this is that NMPC is going to be clearly not below 150 in the fortune 500 companies and our target i can tell you this upfront our target is that by by sheer act of doing things right to getting into a business delivering value to its shareholders investing properly and appropriately and we don't think within three to four years time we should be counting ourselves among first 50 fortune 500 cut is very possible right. It's very, very practical. The numbers are there. Professor Google is there. I can check to see that, you know, that's where I will be today. We'll probably 126, but hopefully, and when we do things right, when you're able to build this company to where it should be, it's not going to take eternity, three, four years max. You will see a situation where this company will be listed among the top uh, 50 countries, companies in the world. I like that reference to Professor Google. That's the first time I've actually heard that. I think that's a jolly good thing. Very interesting. But we also know that the NNPC has a big financial hole. I mean, is the government going to plug that financial hole? I'm not sure you talk about financial hole when you can declare profit. You know, we remember so we, we declare profit. When profit. you declare profit in 2021 of 287 billion, it means that it has taken account of all your liabilities. It's net of asset and liabilities. Of course, we all know this now. So right. you can't declare profit when you have liabilities that you need to worry about. So what does that mean? It means that it's a very profitable company, so we don't have any liability to worry about. Right, okay. Now, um, there seems to be, just listening to you talking, so many aspects and issues to this. Where do you see areas of conflict? Because this is a transition period, as you said. I mean, you're transiting from a corporation mm -hmm. to a limited liability company. Are there still many areas that need to be unpacked and clarified from the law that governs it to numerous other issues? I'm not, I don't think so, because uh, what we see today, I've never heard of a situation where you have clarity of a uh, basis of business as, as we have today. First, you know, it's enough for you to incorporate a company and say that oh, this company is going to operate under the Company Allied Matters Act. That's sufficient uh, basis for any business. But today, you have another law enabling you to do things differently. The Petroleum Industry Act, which has defined how this company will behave, how the board of this company will be established, why it must bring value to its shareholders why it must be the energy security supplier for the country. So it is a company that has better clarification than any other company in the country today in terms of doing business right. And therefore, those are big questions. I can understand even the mind of Nigerians are in transition because they expect that this company will fail. You know, because they have seen the Nigerian National Petroleum Com Company I'm glad losing. You said that, yeah, not me. Course. Yeah, of course, I understand this. We know it's in the media, it's open there. Uh, people say that, oh, this company hasn't done well. We have also said that we didn't make profit until 2021. So we didn't hide that. So that's not a challenge, but we know that it's possible to change this. We know it has happened, that we know that this company is in transition. And of course, that transition has started three years before this situation. And I'm sure we all understand this. Otherwise, you can't declare profit before the establishment of the company itself. But that means that you are in a position to say that this company is doing well. It's not in the past. And Nigerians will expect that, look, whatever you have done in the last 43 years, that's what you're going to continue to do. But that will, that's not what's going to happen, because it has changed. And that change is now being amplified by the fact that we have an enabling legislation. You are bound by a new set of rules mm -hmm. under the Company and Allied Matters Act, which makes it impossible for a company of our size. Mind you, I'm sure you are aware, the energy companies of our size, they never lose money. You know, we're not in business of losing money. We're in a, in a very profitable venture. Right. And, and, and definitely, you know, we don't expect any losses. But of course, what we need is to scale up that, that value. Well, we know companies, and let me end this. Sure. We know companies that have probably less than half of the assets that we have that make more money than we are. We are ashamed of declaring that, oh, we made 287 billion. It's different. And this is simply going to change. And we're going to go to the class of the company that we belong to, and which is that at the end of the day, we'll look back and deliver to our shareholders value that they will expect, but more than anything, to do what they expect us to do, which is that to make sure that we ensure them energy security in the country. It's a very, very different situation. Well, just listening to you, there's this 
optimism that's radiating outwards like a halo and based on that one could say that some progress of sorts has been made but looking at the evolution of the energy sector and of course with the NNPC this is at the early stages what should be the next steps very briefly because we're almost out of time yes the next step is this you know we are going to be IPO ready in by the middle of next year it means that this company's system and processes will be world-class as we're already building it we are seeing the outcomes of that effort and ultimately this company will be the world-class company that we all aspire it to be and what does it mean what it means is that you know you reduce your cost you increase your value and ultimately you're able to pay more taxes to the state and also you're also able to meet your other fiscal obligation taxes and royalties that all companies of our size do and more than anything is that it will be the pride of this country you now this country needs this company to to reflect it to represent it and that representative is very very obvious that uh, nigeria is known for this company and this company is going to be very different this is will be the largest company in africa it is now this moment there's no company that has our assets and as a matter of fact there's no oil company in in africa that has our kind of assets that we have and obviously it's the most capitalized company in africa right. this we also know and ultimately that this will be the biggest corporation the biggest company in, in africa and, and ultimately and Nigeria will say that this is our company as people go around seeing many of the big names that you see in our business they say oh this is adnog this is aramco people always refer to we are petra brass for very many of them i can tell you that we have bet bigger assets than they do they do have and we are going to make use of those assets to make sure that that value comes to our country and that can, our country will be proud that yes we're an energy company we're supply of energy to the world in a very sustainable manner so that ultimately the world will say yes, this is nigeria nigeria right. is here to play a role in the energy sector okay well on that bucolic note i want to thank you very much indeed uh, melek kiari is the group ceo of nnpc limited thank you ever thank so you much. And i appreciate the opportunity